Hello and welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. This is the third episode of the digital publishing series, and I'm going to talk about customizing InDesign for digital publishing today. I'm going to mention how to set up the preferences, how to customize the workspace, how to use document intent, creating document presets and templates, and also how to customize the keyboard shortcuts. So first of all, there's something that is very important to make sure you understand that there are some global and some document specific uh, settings in the preferences of InDesign. You can find the preferences under the InDesign menu and there is preferences and you will find them here. And uh, this will be under edit menu if you are using Windows. Um, so if you have a document open, like in this case I have this magazine cover InDesign file open. If I have this open or any other document, there are some settings that will be only specific to this document which is open, while if I close the document uh, and I have nothing open, then whatever I set up will be a global, so it will be globally used whenever I open a new document. So let me just give you a couple of examples of document specific settings. If I go to the preferences and I choose probably, uh, let's just start with type. And there we have the option called smart text reflow. Now this can be turned off for this document, but that doesn't mean that it will be turned off for every document that I open. So if I want to make sure that there's no smart text reflow set up in InDesign, I have to make sure I close all the documents and then turn it off. So let me just show you how it works. If I turn it off in this document and I click on OK, and then I create a new document by pressing Command N, and I go back to the preferences there, so once it's created, let's just wait for it to be uh, ready. So now if we go back to the type preferences, you can see it's on again. Even though we turned it off, it's on again because it's a document specific setting. And to be able to make sure it's never turned on, I have to turn off both of the, um, or close both of the documents and then go back to the preferences. As a quick way of going back is uh, pressing command K or control K on PC uh, to the preferences and then here if I turn off the smart text reflow that means I globally turn this feature off so if I create a new document now and I go back to the preferences we will be able to see that it's automatically turned off even though it's a brand new document so this is a very important thing that you need to understand that there are some global and some document specific uh, preferences and smart text reflow is one of these uh, document specific settings and um, I prefer to have it on so I'm going to turn off uh, this document or close it and I'm going to go back to the preferences once again type and turn it back on and while we have no documents on, I can show you the other document specific settings. There is another one under the advanced type and here the character settings. So the superscript, subscript and small cap. These can also be changed for every document and these settings will be stored in each of the doc documents separately. So here, if you don't have any documents open, you can set up the default values, which will be used for every document in the future. But if you want to set it up uh, for each document separately, you can also do that. The other document specific option is under the composition, all of these options. Then also you can find document specific options under units and increments. So you can have one document set up with millimeters, another one with inches, and so on and so forth. You can also change the keyboard increments for each of the documents. And then you can also do the same thing with grids and guides as well. So you can set all these options uh, specific to each of your InDesign documents. Now that we went through this, let me just open the document back, which we had previously. So I'm just going to open this uh, magazine cover and there uh, we have it. And there's one thing I want to mention that is very useful. And again, it's under the preferences. 
and that's the brightness of the interface of InDesign and this is something that is uh, completely new in InDesign Creative Cloud and we can set it up under the preferences general uh, sorry it's under the interface so here there are the color themes and I have medium dark but we can change it to even darker or medium light or completely light but we can also use the percentage here on the right so we can uh, change the brightness very easily and we can also choose to match the pasteboard to the theme color so if I set it up like this very dark and I press W then we will be able to see the pasteboard so that is the pasteboard here around the, the page itself and that is matching the color of the user interface so it's also quite dark but if I go back to the preferences and choose interface I can turn this off and then you can see in the background it will always stay bright now for digital publishing I prefer to work with a darker theme I use medium dark and I have also the pasteboard set to uh, match the theme color that's my preference of using this uh, interface brightness another quite useful feature is the option which will disable the highlight object under selection tool so whenever we select something that will always have this bounding box and it will also show the color of the layer that the object is placed in but there's also a highlight whenever we hover over parts of our design like these little frames appearing whenever I hover over them and this is something that is up to you whether you want to have this or you want to get rid of it I just wanted to show you where you can find this it's under the interface options in the preferences and there you can find highlight object under selection tool if I turn that off and I go back now wherever I hover with my mouse I won't see any of these frames only when I select them so it's up to you again whether you want to see these outlines or not I prefer not to see them but once again I'm going to show you it's under the interface and here you can turn it back on another very important part of the preferences is the display performance now once again I prefer to use it with these values set it to high quality which means we will see every image in high resolution uh, whether it's a raster image or vector graphic and we will also see the transparency rendered in high quality which I think is great especially if you have a stronger computer if you are working on a laptop maybe you should use a lower quality option so typical or fast even but there's also another thing the Greek type if that is set to the default value which is I think around 6 or 7 I don't remember exactly but let's just set it to 7 and if I zoom out a bit you can start seeing the Greek ink here uh, that means it will just set blocks for your text now for digital publishing I prefer not to have this at all because I prefer to always see my text no matter how far I zoomed out of it so I just go back and make sure that under the display performance the Greek type below will be set to 2 or 3 now that is very small so only it will turn to Greeking from very far distance which we won't even be able to see also useful to check is the application frame under the window menu if that is turned off and uh, you are on a Mac then you will be able to see through uh, your interface and see the desktop which I like to avoid and I prefer to use it this way so have the application frame turned on and then you won't see anything from your background from the desktop you will only see InDesign and the pasteboard if you are in the normal view that's just again make sure that you don't have a clutter and it's easy to work and concentrate on whatever you have in InDesign another important thing is to set up the pages panel correctly because the pages panel has also quite a lot of options first of all we can go to the panel options from the pages panel drop down so here we can find quite a lot of options we can decide the size of the page thumbnails first of all whether to show thumbnails or not but then we can also specify the size of them 
and then we can also change the options for the masters and we can also decide whether we want to see them vertically or horizontally and where to see them on the top or uh, pages to be on the top but the way I prefer to have uh, my pages panel is to have it in a long vertical panel and uh, whenever I create new pages they will always appear one below the other Another very important feature for digital publishing is this option whenever you right click or context click on the pages panel and then you choose view pages here you can find the alternate layout option when you choose this then you will be able to create as many different layouts as you want so you can set up vertical layout for example and then you can create another layout for horizontal view on your iPad for example these are the options that I'm going to talk in much more detail in the future episodes now I just want to make sure that you know how to set these up and where to find these options so once we have the pages panel set up for the alternate layout view we can go to the drop down and choose create alternate layout and then we can set it up to be a horizontal version so it's already set up that way I'm going to click on OK and we can see we have already two versions obviously the design itself has to be updated accordingly so I'm just going to turn off the locking of the layers and I can change the size of the background and fill it in with black let me just fill this in with uh, black like that and then so on and so forth we can play around with the composition but what I wanted to show you that these changes will only apply to the alternate layout so this horizontal version and not to the vertical version and if I want to see these two layouts side by side for that there is the icon here on the bottom right called a split layout view and if I click on that then I can have a close look at both of the layouts side by side so I have my uh, portrait version here on the right and the landscape on the left so these were the preferences and now let's have a look at how to set up the workspace because we have lots of panels and there are a lot of panels specifically for digital publishing the easiest way to start is to choose digital publishing from the workspace selector and once we have that we will see the panels we will most often use with digital publishing but I prefer to still see my pages panel so I would always have my pages panel uh, selected and placed here uh, closest to my layouts or the, the document area so this is probably something that I would set up for my workspace and you can always save your custom workspace by clicking on the selector and choose new workspace it is also good to notice that there is another default uh, workspace specifically for interactive PDFs so we can also check that out let's just have a look at that once again a different set of uh, panels here on the right I'm going to switch back to digital publishing and it remembered uh, my previous setting for this workspace the next thing that is good to know is when we are in the new document window we have a preview option which will show how the document will turn out it's important because with this we can really easily tell whenever we change something here how it will affect our document so there are a couple of things here which we should uh, check first that's the intent that is probably the most important one and that should be set to digital publishing because then the page sizes will already have uh, the most commonly used devices and everything set up accordingly like the iPad, iPhone, Kindle Fire, Nook and Android the 10 inch so we can always select any of these and then all the settings will automatically be uh, applied for that specific device the main difference between the intents is that print will use uh, units like millimeters for for the measurement and it will use cmyk swatches while the web will use pixels and uh, it will have the facing pages off by default it will have landscape orientation by default and it will have rgb swatches and the also rgb transparency blend space 
and digital publishing intent will have um, automatically again the pixel for measuring the width and the height and it will also have the primary text frame selected and that's an option I'm going to talk uh, in more detail once we get into actually designing uh, for digital publishing it will have also the alternate layout in the pages panel automatically turned on so whenever this intent is selected crea while creating a new document the pages panel will automatically switch to the alternate layout option and it will also have the RGB swatches and transparency blend space selected and if there is a device which is not included in the page size options you can always create a custom one and then you can save it as a preset and you can even save the whole uh, doc new document options into a preset as well so here if you click on this you can save everything that you set up so just to make it easier next time to come back to it and InDesign offers you another way to save time if you have a document let's just say this magazine document which I would like to have as a template saved I can also do that by going to file choosing save as and then here in the format there is an option called InDesign CC template that means it will be saved as a different file format which whenever it's opened it will come up as an untitled document and the first time you save it will make sure it's saved separately and keeping the template intact as it was saved the first time so that's again another way of saving time and just to create templates for yourself that you can use for uh, the future issues for example of the same magazine and last but not least let me show you that you can also change the keyboard shortcuts in InDesign uh, a simple example which I always change in all the Adobe applications is the undo and redo uh, for these I use F1 and F2 so whenever I'm in the keyboard shortcuts uh, menu I can just try to find these options there's undo and I've just assigned function 1 the function key f1 to it while still keeping command z and that's the great thing about InDesign that you can assign several keyboard shortcuts to the same command and then there is another one for redo I use f2 uh, besides using also command shift that still uh, which is the default option for this feature so it's also good to look into the keyboard shortcuts because you might find some features specifically for digital publishing which we use all the time and those are great to set up with the keyboard shortcuts especially the function keys which are not really used in uh, the default keyboard shortcuts and with that said that's all what I wanted to show you in this episode I hope you like this and I hope you found it useful and if you want to learn more about digital publishing with InDesign then make sure you join me next time as well here on Tuts Plus thanks a lot for your attention